Okay, so in this lecture, we're going to continue our discussion of our coding exercise where we want to find the row in a given matrix with the maximum number of ones. So just to recap what the problem is, so we want the row with max ones. Okay, so for example, as input, we might have a matrix 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, eh, let's make it a, let's make it a 1, 1, 1, 1, and a 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay, and so the answer would be this row, which is row number 2, assuming 0 indexing. And the question is to find an algorithm that will return this row given this input, okay? And so one important feature of this matrix is that the rows are sorted. So you can see that all the zeros come before all the ones, okay? So each row is sorted. Now, in the first video, we didn't make use of this information, but you can bet that if you're given some information like this, so if the interviewer ever tells you, hey, this thing is sorted, you're probably going to take advantage of that information somehow. Okay, and so in this lecture, we're going to attempt to take advantage of that information. Now, I want to recap that there are really three ways to approach these videos. Okay, so there are three approaches you can take. Okay, so approach number one would be to simply listen to the problem, just the problem statement, and then go and code the solution yourself. Okay, so that's number one. Listen to the problem statement, and then code the solution yourself. Okay. Now that's the most difficult way to approach this. Now probably the reason you're watching this video is maybe you're not so great at coding interviews and you need a little bit of help. So option number two would be to listen to the solution approach so this is where we describe the solution in words. And so this is more like high level ideas without any code. Okay, so the second way to do this would be to listen to the approach to the solution and then code the solution yourself. Okay. Now, the third way to do this would be to, if you're really, really stuck on number one and number two, is to look at the pseudocode and this is the pseudocode that I present in these lectures on the whiteboard. And then from that pseudocode, it should be simple to code the solution yourself. Okay, so these are the three possible approaches going from most difficult to easiest. And obviously, in a real interview, you're going to be doing number one, there's no number two and number three in an interview. So, you know, if you're at number three right now, your goal should be to get yourself to number two and then get yourself to number one because that's the real world. Number one is the real world. There's no, there's no second place and third place prize for this. Okay. And then I, I realized that um, in today's modern era of online courses where students are just given everything, you might think there's a number four to this. And so you might think number four would be to look at instructor's code and claim 
you could have done that yourself, okay? And so I see this a lot, um, especially on uh, certain websites. I won't name any names, but um, this is not this is not a viable solution, okay? There's no instructor when you go for a job interview. So there are really only three solutions to this, and I hope that you all strive for number one. Okay, so that being said, let's move on to the solution for the second video. And so just to give you some idea of how we're going to present this, there are going to be three videos. The first video showed you the naive solution. The second video is going to show you a better solution. And then the third video is going to show you the best solution. Okay, so this video is going to show you a better solution, the middle solution, and it's going to take advantage of this fact that the rows are sorted, okay? And so just at a high level, so in the first video, what we did was we wrote the algorithm, we wrote the naive algorithm, and then we analyzed the time complexity, okay? But for this video, um, since the pseudocode is a bit less trivial, we're going to talk about the idea first and then do a complexity analysis and then write the actual pseudocode. Okay, the pseudocode for this is much more difficult to write. So that's going to come last. So here's the idea. So since we know that each row is sorted, so there's going to be some zeros, some ones, and we want to find the number of ones. Previously, what we were doing is we were just going through each column one at a time, counting up how many ones we found, okay? And so if, it, if this is an M by N matrix, then this is of size N. And so just this search alone is O of N, okay? But what if, since we know that each row is sorted, we could instead find the number of ones more intelligently. And so my claim is that you can actually use a binary search. Now, this is not a traditional binary search because in a normal binary search, you're searching for an element, okay? But we can't really just say, oh, we're searching for a one because there's lots of ones. So what we really want to do is search for where there is a one and a zero to the left, okay? So it's a binary search where we're searching not just for an element, but for the element to its left. Okay, and so if we could do that, then each of these searches would be of log n, okay, logarithmic because we split the problem in half each time. Okay, so for example, if the input is of size eight, then the next step would be of size four, then the next step would be of size two, then the next step would be of size one. Okay, so you can convince yourself that this would be log n, log base 2 of n. Okay, and then the whole algorithm for searching m rows would be m log n. Okay, so let's see if we can write this in pseudocode. And remember, this is, this is the explanation of the approach to the solution. So you could stop right here and try to implement this yourself. Okay, so here we go. So here's the pseudocode for our better search. And so this is actually going to use up two functions because we're going to call binary search from this function. And you'll see that this is very similar to the previous solution. We're just replacing one part. Okay, so basically the part where we search for how many ones are in a row. We're still going to loop through each row. Okay, so we'll start by initializing max ones. So that's a minus one. And we'll set best row to minus one. So these are like initial dummy values. And then we will loop through each row, also getting the index of the row in enumerate a. Okay, so 
enumerate is how we'll get the index. And we assume, again, that A is nicely formatted, so there won't be any tricks with uh, how the input is formatted. Okay, so here's the difference. So instead of looping through each row now, so for each column in row, what we're going to do is we're just going to find a first one index and we'll call some function that we haven't yet implemented we'll called binary search and we'll pass in the row okay so assuming that this works we can then check so if first one index okay if this is greater than or equal to zero so this means we actually found a one then the number of ones is equal to the length of the row minus the first one index. Now, for me personally, I always get confused about off by one errors. So you can double check this formula to make sure that this actually works, which I have already done, but you should do it yourself. Okay, so this is the same as what we had before. So if we find that the number of ones is greater than max ones, because we're keeping track, then we update best row to be the current row. Okay, so if um, ones is greater than max ones, then max ones equals num ones and best row equals i okay and then by the end of this loop again as with the previous example we now have the best row so we can just return best row okay so that's the solution but we forgot one thing Okay, we have not yet implemented binary search. So we're going to have to do that as well. So let's implement binary search. Now, there are several ways to implement binary search. You could do this recursively or in a loop. And in this uh, particular video, we're going to do it in a loop. Okay, so Basic idea is we're going to have two pointers, the left and the right, which is the length of a minus one. And then on each iteration of this loop, we're going to check the middle value, which is the middle between left and right. And we can quit the loop when this condition is no longer true. So when left is no longer less than or equal to right. Okay. So we begin the loop by getting the middle index. So the mid is left plus the right minus left integer divide by two. Okay, so that's how we get the middle index. And then we check. So we only ever check what's at the middle index and next to it. Okay, so if we say if, it will check if a mid is equal to one and either mid is equal to zero or a at mid minus one equals zero then we found what we were looking for, which is the leftmost one. Okay, so we return mid. So just think about those two cases, right? Either here's a one and there's nothing to the left, so mid is zero, or the one's over here and there's a zero over here, right? So 
the index at mid minus one is zero. Okay. Otherwise, we do our binary search either to the left or to the right. So if we're looking at a zero, actually, if the element at mid is zero, okay, then we just search to the right. So how do we search to the right? So again, you could do this recursively, but in this lecture, we're going to do this in a loop. So we just update the left value. So we say left is equal to mid plus, yeah, that's ugly, mid plus one. Okay. So let's say mid is right here. We want to say mid plus one to search this part of the array. Otherwise, we say right is equal to mid minus one. Okay, so we're searching to the left. And this is the case where mid is not zero, but mid is actually one. It's just that the left value is not zero. So, you know, we're in some area of the array where it's like all ones, and then we want to search the left half of that array. Okay, so otherwise, if we get all the way here, we'll return minus one to say there was no one found. Oh, and so again, if you want to see the actual code for this solution, please go to my website at lazyprogrammer.me. Okay, so try this out, and I'll see you in the next video.